Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see your smiling faces all again. <laughs> so, as Zelen said, the focus of this two weeks will be child development, but from the very beginning. In fact, even before the beginning. Because we have to make a transition from all the work we did before about cosmic development. How does that then become embryonic development and then child development? And because uh, we'll be dealing with child development, I told May that we could uh, invite any teachers who would be interested in these lectures. Do we have teachers? Because I would want you to work with me and also the mothers here. Because when I talk about the different periods, we want to share observations that people have made with their children. I'm especially also interested in how the young Chinese children act in these different ages, whether there's a difference between what we're seeing in the West now. Because even since Rudolf Steiner's time in the early 20th century, children in the West have changed a lot. Because of our materialistic and individualistic culture, children have been pushed much, much sooner to develop. And now we're experiencing lots of problems, especially medical problems, because of these in later age. And these problems start even much earlier with children, especially with what we call attention deficit. The children are having a hard time being present. So definitely in the West, world of education is really almost a therapy for many children. So it would be interesting for me to see how do this, these problems we're seeing in the West compare to what you experience here in China. Do you know what I'm trying to get at with you? I want to, in the next two weeks, to talk about uh, embryology and child development, but I want to work with you to make these thoughts alive. The one thing that can help us grow into an activity of living thinking is to see that this material world has different levels, different forces in it. And these levels get finer and finer, just like these levels of consciousness I spoke about before. So I'm going to show you some pictures, images of these forces all around us, and try to show you that we go from something that's dead, even lower than dead, and can go even higher into life. Yeah? Okay, can you see that? So this is an image of a form, forms that we have around us. This is a very pure form. So this is crystal. And this crystal has substance, dead substance, but it has something besides dead substance. It has, it has a form in it. All right, now what if we go down one level, we go down to what you call earth? What's the difference between the crystal and then just broken earth? What does the form look like here? <laughs> Yeah, it, it has substance, and its form has no, it's breaking up, it has no um, integrity, yes? So here, we don't see any life, any, any signature of life, anymore. we don't see any trace of life, we just see something's dead and breaking into pieces. What's important here is we have material, we have substance, and we have kind of formlessness. It's form, but it's breaking up all over. Now we can go down from here into lower levels of substance where the breaking up gets even stronger. But I want to go up from here. So if we go up one step, now we have this substance because this, you know, this is silica. This is quartz with silica. And this could have silica in it. This could have the mineral, the substance silica, but it's taking on no form. But here, the substance, what's happened? What's happened to the substance? Look, look at the color of the substance here. Look at the color and the form. The form is chaotic. And what happens? Here now, that silica takes on there's something very, very different. What's different here? This is, this is clear. This is pure substance, very pure. And there's a form here. What does this form make you think of? Growth. Growth. Spurting up. And where? Growth down? Growth up. Up to the stars. 
Yeah? And this, this is this dead, but it still has these very strong life forces around it. Yeah? You can heal with crystals. You can heal. You can heal. Heal. Yeah? You, if you know how to yeah. grasp these forces that are all around, they're outside. Yeah? And now let's go up one more level. Water. Look at the form. Look at the substance in the form. The substance and the form are almost the same thing. Now, also, the substance can be very pure and very clear, just like the crystal. But what's it doing all the time? What's it doing all the time? Flowing. Flowing, moving. It's a substance that's always flowing and moving. And what about the form? This, this is a form just looking at water as drops fall into it. Now, this is water. They've just sprinkled some dust on it. They, they put a little bit of oil in it so the dust stays on the surface. And they just moved, them, moved a hand through the water. Does this look familiar to you? something through it, slowly. And, and these, this is the top of, and underneath it looks like this, so it's doing that, but down below it's doing vortexes everywhere. Can you imagine when you're doing that on the back, that you're creating these forces down in the body? You know, people said this looks like, I guess I can use this, this looks like growth, or you might say frozen growth. Yeah? Yeah? Look at these forms. These aren't frozen. These are all, this is all in movement. All of this, there's these movements going on. Very fine, very fine movements within movement. Yeah? You can look, of course, you can look this, at, at the sea or a, a river. You can see, if you really watch, you can see all these movements. But you can't see all the movements that are going on at every level within the water. And all these movements, they're, they're, they're more than growth. They're like life itself. They're like life taking place. So this is going on in water all the time. What if we go up one level? Air. Now, this is only, we only see the trace of air because this is smoke. This is actual substance. Now, but look at this and then think of the typhoon when it comes. How is the air movement different than the water? You know, you have, uh, if you have a stream here, and if I put a rock in that stream, this will make a form because of the rock on it. And that form stays. The water flows through. The water flows through with the form. Let's say it looks like this. Yeah? The form is always there. The water flows through it. Because the water is always pressing down. The water, like the solid, has gravity. But here, we're free from the gravity. We have forms in levity. These forms, they also have, you know, they've, you can study with, with, um, with uh, smoke in very complicated little forms. Forms within forms within forms, you yeah? So these forms are full of levity and they're constantly, constantly changing. They never stay the same. They're not staying so much in the flow itself unless we form them, like we do in a flute. We can form them in a substance outside, but they don't have form in their own substance. They're coming into form and going out of form all the time. And when I make, when I make a form to make this air have particular form, I start to have music. I have forms coming and going out of being in time. That's music. And if I go up again, yeah, this is the sun. This is a picture of the edge of the sun. Look at these, this substance. This substance is, what is it? It's light. It's light and form, yeah? Now look at these forms. And if we go even higher, we go out into the cosmos, yeah? Whoops. Now these are, 
these are stars. Yeah, when they've taken pictures of the of the Hubble's uh, Hubble telescope, it doesn't look like dead forms out there. It's a living structure of movement, of form, of light, of heat, of air. Now that that's the universe. The universe is full of form. So I want you to imagine. So let's go back here to the warm. You know, we, we see here, here we have some substance with a form. We, we gave this substance form. Human beings gave it form. And so we got to study this in science, and then we look at the human being and we say, well, it's the same stuff, it's just in a different form. But when you look at the human being, you see the substance, the dead substance. This has all been excreted from a living process, and it's, it's going on all the time. My skin is flaking off, and I'm creating new skin cells all the time. I'm a flow of substance. My body is similar to this form that's in a stream. It's here all the time. I'm, my cells are coming into being. I'm creating billions of, of uh, blood cells and many, many skin cells, and they're all, all, everything is coming into being and going out of being. Can you imagine, for some reason, in a, with a modern consciousness, we think that beings, living conscious beings, can only be in material substance. Sorry, I mean solid material substance. That's very important. The earth we saw is solid. The mineral is solid. The water is not so solid. The air is not solid at all. And the warmth is not at all solid. In the next few days, we're going to talk about embryology and then the development of the child. And we're always going to be looking at the child's body or the child's body coming into being through embryology. And I'll draw things, but we'll be talking about only the solid part of the being. So here's, here's a form in fire. Can you imagine that form itself could be a being or part of a being? Can you imagine that each of you has a warmth the body, a body only made of warmth, but very detailed, very complex, but only warmth, and that that body has a consciousness, a very high level of consciousness, you, you only touch it once in a while. And can you imagine that you have an air body, right when you breathe in, that these forms are inside you, go even up into your brain, they go down into all of your body, that you have an air being in you, and that you see that warmth body when you look at your own I. When you have an experience, not I, ego, or I, personality, when you touch I, you touch that warmth body in you. That's your inside picture of that warmth body. You, you do have a picture of it, but just, just I. And that your will is in that, but you're unconscious. Just only conscious of I, but what that I really is, you're not conscious of. And that that air body in you, that the air body, you experience it in your feeling. That's your experience of your own very complicated air organization. And that that's a real organization. An organization, I can say, experience joy, and you can do things to make joy happen. Or you can do things to make sadness happen. You can work within that air body. And we know we're 70 to 80 percent water. Our body right now is mostly water. And what is our, can you imagine we have a water being, that that being is actually, there is a water being inside of us. And that our experience, we have a twofold experience of that water being. Our own life, the forces that are building us all the time, we can feel this as our life. Not very clear, but we can feel alive. And these forces get freed in us, and we can think with these forces. Not the contents of our thought, but the movements of our thought. The forming, organizing logic of our thoughts. Our feeling, we can't control in the same way that we can control our thoughts. We can have really, with the mathematics, really crystal clear thoughts. When I think about a circle is a line that's equal distance from a point. All points in the periphery are equal distance from a central point. Every circle, every circle has this law. It's like a fixed frozen law. 
Look, we can also imagine, think imaginatively, but we make one movement of thought after another. And we have these crystal clear thoughts, almost dead, and then we have depression. Nothing even fits together anymore. We can't think anymore. Can we go lower than this? Where, where we, here, when we go higher, I'll talk about this tomorrow, when we go higher than warmth, when we go higher than warmth, we begin to get to the life itself without any substance. So with the warmth, you know you have, it feels hot outside, and you know you can feel warm inside. You can feel warmth in your soul. You can feel love, which generates warmth. Actually, your body gets warmer when you have enthusiastic, loving thoughts. And when you, they've done tests on this, and when you think just normal, dead, logical thoughts, with no emotion, your body gets cooler, a little bit cooler. I can't talk about it now, we don't have enough time, but we can go higher. Air, we have, an, uh, we have the forces in air that are free from substance, we call the light ether. And we have forces from the water, we call the sound or the chemical ether. These are pure life forces that are not in matter anymore. They're free from matter. And the highest life forces that Rolf Steiner talks about are the life ether. The forces of life so strong that they can make forms within dead substance. But we can go lower, <coughs> deeper into death, rather than higher into life. We can go into the element just below Earth. Again, like the life world, which is invisible. You know, the, the, the elements are visible, but the life world is invisible. The ethers are invisible. Yeah? But here, the forms we see in the plants, these come out of the life and the sound and the light ether. And we also have forms with these lower levels. Maybe I'll have time tomorrow to talk more about it, but I wanted to show you. So these, look at this form here. This is electricity. Yeah? It, the electricity itself is invisible. You only see the light form that comes out of it. But we can go deeper than this to the magnetic forces. Whoops. You know, these are pieces of iron, tiny pieces of iron, that are put around the magnetic field. So the iron immediately gets taken and pushed wherever the field wants to be. The field is a very strong field of force, very completely invisible. And we can go even deeper, the nuclear forces, where everything gets destroyed and breaks into itself and breaks everything around it. And our modern science, our modern technology, our modern culture is built now on these three forces. And we explain everything else, all of life, all of consciousness, all of being, just from these forces. We say at the base, at the fundamental, we only have electromagnetism. And that's all we are really made out of. When I talk to you the rest of the time, I'd be talking about the body, the human body, and of course we have this substance, especially when we have a corpse, we have just the substance. But we also have in the bones, in the teeth, in the solid parts of the body, forms that have come out of process, out of life, out of activity. And that all the time we can't see these forces, but we have we have a warmth body an air body and a water body all the time when I'm talking about the child, when I'm talking about the human being, we don't just look at the body, we also look at these processes, we look at consciousness, and we look at self-consciousness. So I'm trying to get you to feel, yes, I will talk about all the biology and the embryology and even the physiology and anatomy of the growing child, but all the time we're talking about many different layers levels of being. Of course, we also have an electrical being. And this is what science studies. They study our electrical body. We'll talk more about this, but all of our consciousness, according to science, has to do with electrical impulses inside our brain that go down inside our body through our nerves. But Rudolf Steiner says, science is only studying a ghost body. This being is there in each of us, but it comes into us just after birth, and it has to leave before death. It can't stand human death. So we all have this ghost all the time in us, that we carry with us. Of course, science is studying human 
being, human behavior, human forms. But they explain this human being with this ghost, this, this electrical body. And we can study this. It's important to know this. But it's also important to know about the, the real water being, the air being, and the warmth being of the human being. If we can just go from to water ideas, there'll be more living, or air ideas, or warm fire ideas, or already be more living than our normal dead pictures. I want to be clear, I am not talking about the Chinese elements. It's a completely wrong thing to try to relate the Western elements to Chinese elements. If you really study this, these are not about the physical substance around us. You know, in anthroposophy, you talk about the upbuilding, the growing upbuilding processes in the human being and the dying, uh, um, not have down building, but breaking up processes. Yeah? The division, the building up and the breaking down. We're doing that all the time in our body, in our, in our chemistry. Yeah? These are not about the elements of the substance and the form that I was talking about before. This has come out of Chinese medicine. This, these are the life processes going on. These are the upbuilding processes and the dividing process, the down, the, the up, the down building. What, 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 what do you think? Catabolic and anabolic. Yeah, we've talked about this before, haven't we? It's related to substance, but it's related to medical substance, to medicines. Yeah? You need to know how you use metals, how you use water, how you use plants, how you use warmth how you use uh, minerals and uh, uh, salts. You need to understand how these substances work in the human body, either by breaking down too strong of forces or building up forces that aren't strong enough. You understand? It's a totally different thing. This is ancient Chinese thinking. They, they weren't even thinking about the dead earth. Nothing was dead to them. Everything was alive. And this is how these life forces are working in each other. Yeah? So the water is feeding the plants, the wood. The wood is feeding the fire. The, the fire is forming the earth. The earth holds the metals, yeah? They're all upbuilding process. Yeah? Or the life is too strong. There's, there's a fever, there's too much metabolic activity, so we need to break it down. The water puts out the fire, yeah? The fire melts the metal. The, the earth, um, to the water. Holds the water, yeah? So this is this is a breaking apart process. These are more related to the ethers I was speaking to you about than to the elements of earth, uh, water, and so forth that we speak about with our sense experience. Okay, so I'm going to stop now because we're running out of time. I'm trying to show you that the things anthroposophy talks about are all around us all the time, but our thinking is We've been trained to have dead, fixed thinking, and we need to bring our thinking alive with our imagination. And it's a reality. And we especially need this living thinking to understand the child, the incarnating child, the growing child, because the child is coming from this warmth body down into the air body, down into the... always coming, incarnating into a physical body. And this is an amazing process to see this, this incarnation process of a spirit. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I just wanted to show you these pictures to see this relation of substance and form. Substance and form at higher or lower levels. Yeah? So that in our studies the next week, we can see how they work together.